Since its premiere in 2005, God of War has given us mythology with a heavy dose of hack and slash. In the most recent installment, Kratos finds himself pitted against the gods of Norse mythology, this time with his son by his side. But who are the new gods that Kratos has to contend with? Hi, I'm Jetset from the Leaderboard, and we're going to give you a rundown of all of the Norse mythology in God of War. Freya in God of War, Freya first appears as the Witch of the Woods. She agreed to marry Odin to stop the war between the two factions of gods, the Aesir and the Vanir. As Odin's wife, she was the warrior queen of the Valkyries and the master of satyr magic. Odin picked up one or two things from her. When Freya left Odin and fled to Midgard, he placed a curse on her, preventing her from harming any living creature. A prophecy foretold that her son by Odin, Baldur, would be killed, leading her to place him under a spell of invulnerability. God of War's Freya is a friend to Kratos and Atreus. She's one of the first people they encounter who recognizes them for the gods they are, and she proves a useful companion. Freya's magic reanimates Mimir's head, and she heals an injured Atreus. Freya's counterpart in Norse mythology is the goddess associated with love, beauty, fertility, satyr magic, war, and death. To be fair, almost every Norse god ends up being associated with war and death. She rides in a chariot pulled by two grey cats. When warriors die in battle, Freya chooses half of them to go to Folk of Vondor, and the other half to go to Valhalla with Odin. Baldur. God of War players will recognize Baldur as the tattooed villain who just won't die. He's the son of Freya and Odin, half-brother to Thor and Tyr, and uncle to Modi and Magni. The game makes much of the fact that he's impervious to pain. To make things worse, he can't handle pleasure because of a spell cast on him by his mother Freya. God of War's Baldur is a manic, restless character who not only brings some serious battles, but also shows God's softer side when he pleads with Freya to lift his curse. In Norse mythology, Baldur is the son of Odin and Frigg. The best-known story about Baldur deals with his death, which leads to the beginning of Ragnarok. His closest mythological analog is Apollo, and he's described as beautiful, bright, shining, and loved by all. In the story of his death, Baldur begins to dream about his demise. Worried, his mother Frigg promises that all things on Earth will not harm her son, except mistletoe. Loki tricks Baldur's blind brother, Hodor, into shooting Baldur with a mistletoe arrow, killing him. Some scholars believe our Christmas tradition of kissing under mistletoe is about Baldur, which is not only morbid, but fitting given how horrendous holiday parties can get. Loki. If you're watching this video, you're probably deep enough in God of War to be immune to spoilers. But if you're not, turn back. We've got a big spoiler coming your way in the form of Loki. Boy. 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 So, it turns out Atreus is Loki, son of the Jotun Fey and Kratos, the god of god-killing and quick-time events. He's a young boy who's intelligent and compassionate, but once he learns of his true nature as a god, he gets way cockier. It was Fey who taught Atreus the languages of the Nine Realms and archery. She wanted to name him Loki, but Kratos argued against it, naming him instead after his friend and fellow Spartan, Atreus. He's not especially tricky or prone to lies or disguises, but he's still young. Who knows how much he'll grow into his namesake? I don't know about you, but sassy god Atreus seemed much more like the classic trickster god than the sweet Atreus we met in the beginning of the game. Loki's parents are the giants Lofrey and Falbati. He's referred to as the blood brother of Odin, not of Thor. Loki is the father of Hel, goddess of well, hell, Jormungand the world serpent, and Fenrir the giant wolf that devours Odin at Ragnarok. Loki is a trickster, sometimes helping, sometimes hurting, but always playing by his own rules. Atreus is not a character in Norse mythology, but in Greek mythology he was king of the city-state Mycenae. He was also the father of Agamemnon and Menelaus, who was married to Helen, you know, of Troy. In Greek, his name means fearless. God of Wars Atreus is certainly fearless, but only time will tell if he embraces his trickster roots. Thor. Thor in the game is one of the leading antagonists, even though he barely appears in the storyline at all. Thor is the son of Odin, father of Modi and Magni, brother of Baldur, an all-around colossal jerk. His primary goals are to wipe out Jotunheim at Odin's request, thinking without the giants that the gods can prevent Ragnarok, and murder the crap out of Kratos and Atreus. However, he ends up leaving this task to his sons. In Norse mythology, Thor isn't a blonde Adonis. He's a ginger. But he's the strongest of all the gods and becomes twice as mighty when he wears his magic belt. He's the son of Odin and a Jotun, or giant, sometimes called Jord. Not only was Thor the ideal warrior, but he also was invoked to bless weddings in father's fields. He rides a chariot pulled by two goats, and if he gets hungry, he can kill and eat his goats, bless their remains with Mjolnir, and resurrect them so they can pull his chariot again. Thor was the most 
most popular god among warriors and ordinary people in Norse society, who often wore a hammer charm the same way Christians wear a cross. Mimir In God of War, Mimir stands as a god of wisdom and knowledge. He is Odin's counselor and ambassador. He's imprisoned by Odin until Kratos cuts off his head and carries it around with him wherever he goes. He claims to be the smartest man on Earth, so sharp that Baldur doesn't believe he doesn't know Kratos' whereabouts. Mimir had previously advised Odin to marry Freya to end the Asir Vanir War. In game, Mimir is Kratos' sassiest accessory. While cruising around the Lake of Nine, he tells Atreus much better stories than what Kratos was capable of, and also plays a key role in interpreting lore that's uncovered throughout the game. Mimir's uncanny knowledge of the past and seemingly the future makes him an essential member of Kratos' crew. The Mimir of Norse myth is slain by the Vanir because they believe him to be cheating on behalf of the Aesir. They sent his head back to the Aesir. Odin preserved the head and carried it around with him, frequently calling on its wisdom. Mimir possessed a well that feeds the roots of Yggdrasil, the world tree. Odin wanted to drink from the well, but Mimir would not allow it. Perhaps Mimir of myth is as sassy as the head in God of War. Sindri and Brock are two dwarf brothers who forged Kratos' axe, Leviathan. Sindri is also responsible for creating Thor's hammer, Mjolnir. The brothers have opposite personalities, with Brock being aggressive and crass, while Sindri is nervous and clean to the point of obsession. Many refer to them as the Huldra brothers. A Huldra is a seductive female forest spirit, similar to a nymph or a mermaid. So maybe there's a side to the dwarf brothers we haven't seen yet. Who's your favorite brother? Let us know in the comments. Here at the leaderboard, we love Sindri, that fastidious little nerd. In myth, Brock and Sindri, also called Brocker and Atri, are best known for one story. Loki bragged that another clan of dwarf smiths, the son of Ivaldi, were the best craftsmen. Brock challenged the sons of Ivaldi to a contest to see which brothers would make the most splendid gifts for the gods. If Brock and Sindri won, they would receive Loki's head as a reward. Despite Loki's best effort to sabotage them, Brock and Sindri were judged to have created the best gifts. But Loki would not let them take his head, saying it would damage his neck. Instead, Brock sewed Loki's mouth shut so the trickster couldn't brag of his cleverness. Modi and Magni Unlike in God of War 4, where Modi and Magni are Thor's children, originally they're sons of Odin. They first show up with their uncle Baldur, trying to intimidate Mimir into revealing to them some important information. Magni is boastful and cruel, while Modi is crude. Both sons have power over lightning, just like their divine father. They are always fighting each other over Thor's hammer Mjolnir, but get this, it seems that Thor favors Magni over Modi. Modi plays a crucial role in Atreus' development. We see Atreus embracing his godhood by stabbing Modi right in the neck. In myth, Modi and Magni are the sons of Odin and a giantess called Jarn Saxa. Their names mean brave and great, respectively. After Ragnarok, the end of days, Modi and Magni survive and inherit Mjolnir, but they aren't tremendous players in North mythology otherwise. Odin, Hugin, and Munin. While Odin doesn't appear in the game, his influence permeates throughout the story. Odin is the king of the gods, father of Baldur, Tyr, and Thor, and the one who imprisoned his advisor Mimir. He's bright but also also cruel and paranoid. His son Tyr set up traps to keep Odin out of the realm of the giants, knowing his father wanted only to destroy them. In return, Odin murdered Tyr. Odin's ravens are glowing green spies scattered throughout the game, and when you kill them, you get XP. In Norse myth, Odin is the ruler of the gods, the god of wisdom, magic, and of course, war and death. Only Freya is more skilled at magic than Odin, even though among Germanic people, magic was the purview of women. It was considered shameful for warriors to be sorcerers. Many call Odin Allfather, because he created both the gods and humankind. Unlike many gods that are depicted as the peak of physical perfection, Odin is missing an eye. He plucked it out in exchange for a drink from Mimir's well. One drink from the well gave him knowledge of the past, present, and future. Instead of sitting in the Hall of Valhalla in Asgard, Odin prefers to wander the Nine Realms to see what's going on with his eye. Odin is sometimes called the Raven God. The most well-known of those ravens are Huyin and Munin. Huyin means thought, and while Munin often translates to memory, it's more accurate to say desire. They are sent out every morning to collect knowledge for Odin. Tyr. Tyr is the son of Odin, Thor's brother and Baldur's half-brother. Like Odin and Thor, he does not appear in the game but has a prominent role in the story. Unlike Odin, who is feared and distrusted, Tyr is well-loved by the people of the Nine Realms. He is very wise and cunning and willing to share his wisdom while Odin keeps it to himself. Tyr wanted peace between the giants and the Aesir, unlike his father Odin who only wanted to defeat them. The giants worked together to build Tyr's temple, one of the central regions you explore in the game, from 
which you can reach the other realms. Tyr is the god of law and justice. Oh, and also war, because they didn't already have enough gods of war. In some sources, he's the son of Odin, but in others, he's the son of the giant Hamir. He was once the leader of the gods, but over time, his role was overtaken by Odin and Thor. He's often called the bravest of the gods, but he's only got one hand as he sacrificed one to the giant wolf Fenrir when the gods tried to bind him. Nine realms, Yggdrasil, and the Bifrost. In God of War, the Bifrost is a device that holds the light of Alfheim. Using the device, you can travel to any of the nine realms, which are intertwined with the world tree Yggdrasil. You move an actual physical realm travel bridge using the Bifrost to connect to towers in each of the nine realms. Only gods could travel via the Bifrost in Legend. Mortals would burn up if they set foot on the Rainbow Bridge, but the nine realms are connected by the world tree Yggdrasil. Yggdrasil was the tree Odin hung from for nine days and nights in return for learning runes, the magical writing system of the Vikings. It's the most beautiful and most significant of all trees. The nine realms it links are Asgard, home of the Aesir, where the honorable dead rest in Valhalla and Folkavanger, Vanaheim, home of the Vanir, Alfheim, home of the Light Elves, Midgard, the world of humans. Tolkien was inspired by this term to call the world Middle-earth. Svartalfheim, home of the dwarves and the Dark Elves, which are thought by some scholars to be one and the same. Muspelheim, the realm of fire. Niflheim, land of ice. Jotunheim, the land of the giants where Mimir's well can be found. And Helheim, home of the dishonored dead. Fafnir. Sindri tells you Fafnir is a dwarf. He has a storeroom full of treasure, including a whetstone Sindri wants. You later find a chained up dragon that Mimir calls Fafnir. When Atreus asks why he's a dragon now, Mimir answers merely, funny how life works, isn't it? In myth, Fafnir was the son of a dwarf king. He was the most reliable and most aggressive of his father's sons, so he took up the task of guarding his father's treasure, eventually becoming a dragon. He ends up slain by the mortal hero Sigund, the foster son of his brother Regan. The story of Fafnir's defeat is actually the inspiration for Wagner's opera Siegfried. World Serpent Jormungand The World Serpent can be found encircling Midgard. The witch tells you he's destined to battle Thor at Ragnarok. World Serpent scales are an essential item used for upgrading your weapons in God of War. You can find the scales around the Lake of the Nine. The name of the World Serpent is Jormungand, which means Great Beast. It's a sea serpent that encircles Midgard, the world of humans. Ancient people believed Jormungand's movements caused earthquakes. Jormungand is the great enemy of Thor. During Ragnarok, Thor and Jormungand have their showdown and eventually kill each other. Jormungand is the child of Thor's other nemesis Loki and the giantess Angerboda. Seder. Seder is an evil type of magic in the game, used by enemies like Reavers and Revenants. To the ancient Norse, Seder is a type of magic that focused on learning and changing destiny. Practitioners would go into a trance and try travel outside their bodies through the Nine Realms to gather information and bend fate. Seder was a woman's magic, and men who practiced it gave up traditional masculine roles in Norse society. Freya was the goddess most associated with Seder sorcery, but Odin was also quite adept at it. Seder was concerned with the Norns, three deities analogous to the Greek fates. Fate was a much looser concept in Norse than Greek mythology, and was subject to change at the will of the gods, elves, and even humans. With Kratos moving from Greek to Norse gods, it's anyone's guess who's next. Our vote is for ancient Egypt. I'm Jet Set and thanks for watching our overview of the mythology of God of War. Did we miss anything? Comment below and let us know. Don't forget to click the bell icon to become part of the notification squad. And if you like getting more from your games, subscribe to the leaderboard, your home for video game facts.